Hey guys, what's going on? My name's George and welcome back to the Flora YouTube channel. So today was supposed to be the end of the bedding period for the EBC yellow stuff breaks that we got done in the last video at Mosaic Performance. If you haven't checked that video out, I'll link it up here. Go and check that out. One of my favorite videos we've done to date. I had such great fun recording that video and the brakes on the E92 are getting better and better as we start to bed in these brake pads. Now we're approaching the end of the bed in period. So in the next week or so, I will be doing a full review of what I feel the difference was to my old brake pads in those EBC yellow stuff brake boxes over there versus the new ones we've now got on the M3. So if you paid attention to the end of the last video you would have heard me speak about a new series that I want to bring to the Vlorit YouTube channel and that is the best fast cars you can buy for under £20,000. Now this series is aimed at anyone that is looking to get into a fast car with a budget of £20,000. It can go from the younger guys wanting to get into their first fast car or some of the older guys looking to get a cheap weekend toy. Now we're gonna be covering convertibles, hatchbacks, estate cars, coupes, everything you can get for under £20,000. I'm gonna be doing a video on each of the cars. Cars that I'd like to buy myself, but also cars that I think are great value to buy at the moment and are actually affordable for the normal person. And that could be anything from MX-5s to RS4 Advanced to everything in between. So what car are we gonna be covering today? Well, you've probably guessed from the title and that is gonna be the Honda S2000. But before we get into the video, I wanna say that we've had a new intro created by my friend, Tim Cortese. I'll link all of his stuff down in the description go give his channel a follow there's some amazing videos so let's roll the new intro okay so the honda s2000 or s2k if you're from the noughties <laughs> So most of you will probably already know what this car is, and that is really simple. Small, lightweight, fast, and convertible. Now, I love the Honda S2000. It was a really, really cool car to me when I was younger. Rivaled the MX-5. Now, it never really had the sales of the MX-5, but it was still a great car in its own. And with that VTEC engine as well, revving up to around 9,000 RPM, it's such a cool, fast, fun car to drive. So let's go over the quick history of the S2000. So the S2000 was introduced technically in 1995 as a concept car by Honda. Now the S2000 was technically introduced in 1995 at the Tokyo Motor Show. It was introduced as the Honda Sport Study Model. This was Honda trying to get back to its roots. Now when Honda first started, they started making two-seater convertible sports cars, such as the S500, 600 and 800. Now these were really, really cool, small, fast cars with high revving engines. But as Honda evolved as a company, it started to move more towards the Civics and the Integras and more of the economic family cheap model of car. But Honda quickly realized that they were moving away from what their roots were, which were two-seater convertible sports cars meant for reliability, but also fun driving. So they came up with the idea of going back to another two-seater convertible sports car, which is when they introduced in 1995, that concept car. Now there was lots of hype about this car, which led to the S2000 being introduced on April 15th, 1999. Now the S2000 was a throwback right to Honda's roots with a long nosed front engine, rear wheel drive, two-seater sports car, really brought back that driving enthusiast pleasure aspect of their car cars. Now the first edition of the S2000 was the AP1. So the car was front mid-engined, rear wheel drive, two seats and a lot of fun. Its power came from an inline four two litre VTEC engine positioned just right in the car to give a 50-50 weight balance. Honda were proud of the chassis that they made for the S2000. With its skeleton shell it was supposed to be ridiculously rigid and give great support when handling round corners. It also came with double wishbone suspension, electric steering and integrated roll hoops as well as 16 inch alloys as standard. The engine was positioned just behind the front axle to to really give the S2000 that 50-50 weight balance of the more expensive supercars of the day, giving it fantastic handling around corners. So the AP1 was manufactured up to around 2003. So from 2004, Honda started bringing in the AP2. So in the AP2, there was a slight engine upgrade, moving that original two litre VTEC up to 2.2 litres and changing the horsepower to around 247 horsepower to the rear wheels. Now, one of the most important factors of the S2000 is that two litre VTEC engine, revving up to 9,000 RPM 
again with that digital futuristic dial that I personally love, but at the time, not that many people really enjoyed. This engine featured Honda's specific variable valve timing, allowing for the car to have extra power up high in the RPM range. Peak power was made at around 8,300 RPM, which meant that you really, really had to drive the nuts off this car to get the most out of it. And that's what kind of appeals to me the most. Similar to the United 2 M3, you have to really, really drive the car up in the rev range and really maximize the potential of that engine. So the AP2 ran from 2004 up to 2009, where unfortunately Honda then canceled the production of the S2000. Now it ran for a 10 year period, however, the MX-5, its biggest competitor, was more of a fan favorite at the time. But at 28,000 pounds brand new, the S2000 was a fantastic bargain because it was up against the Z3M and the MX-5. And I personally think the S2000 looks the best out of all of those. Now, the, Z the Z3 is a cool car, but you really had to have the Z3M to really kind of make it what it was meant to be. And you had to spec the hell out of it to really make it as good quality as the S2000. So in my opinion, the S2000 is the best two seater sports car from that era that you can buy. Now there were some special editions made to go to Japan, America, and the UK, but specifically for the UK, we got the GT edition. Now the GT edition came with the GT trim, which basically meant you got kind of upgraded bodywork, upgraded diffusers, which basically meant you just kind of got revamped trim. So almost like a facelift, but you got a removable hard top as standard, and you also got an inside and outside temperature gauge because why not, I guess. Okay, so let's jump on Auto Trader and see what type of cars we've got and the budget you're gonna need in order to buy an S2000. Okay, so I'm on Auto Trader. I'm gonna go down, we're gonna select Honda and S2000. So I'm not gonna put any filters on the car just yet. We're gonna have a look at, at all the cars that are there and we're gonna filter on the lowest and then we're gonna filter on the highest because one of the things that I really, really believe in when you're looking to buy a car is going and getting in the cheapest car and then going and getting the most expensive car and then weighing up in your head the difference that you get from quality of car versus the price that you're paying. Because if you go and get in a seven grand car and it's nice, and you go and get in a 20 grand car and there isn't that much difference between the two, why are you gonna spend 13,000 pounds more? So it's really important just to kind of get that in your head and understand the difference in specs as to why. So let's jump in and see what the cheapest car there is. So 48 cars available and the cheapest car that we can find, so we were still to buy, filter by low to high. Now we're gonna exclude Cat D's and the cheapest car we can find is this blue one at 7,500 pounds. Now I really think the Silverstone Blue in the S2000 is actually a really nice color and I kind of controversially like the blue on blue leather. Now that might be quite a good combination to go for, but this car is up at 7,500 pounds and it's a 2002, so kind of the middle of the AP1. Now the car's got 98,500 miles on, so quite a lot of miles. However, Honda are notorious for their reliability, so don't be put off of buying a high mileage S2000 if you haven't got that much of a budget or you're looking to turn it into a bit of a project car where you wanna dump some money into it, buying a higher mileage one and doing some preventative service and maintenance on the car can really help prolong the longevity of these engines. And I've seen a lot of these cars on 160, 170,000 miles. So we know that they can go a long, long way. So don't be put off by a higher mileage car if you're on a cheap budget. So 98,000 miles, 2002, manual, we've got a nice convertible roof. So let's have a look through the images on Autotrader. So the car looks like it's been kept in good nick. I like the blue standard exhaust. That rear tail light I just love as well. I think that's really cool. Now let's have a look. So the roof, the roof looks okay. It looks a little bit faded, but it seems to go down. We've got black interior, red brake calipers. The wheels look like do with some work, but again, for seven and a half grand, you're not really asking for much more than that. Picture of the engine. We've got a paint match cover on there as well. The engine bay looks like it could do with some work, but again, this is a 2002 car. It's an old car, so it's going to have some wear. It's going to have some grime. So just be prepared to put some time and effort into cleaning it up and replacing the bits that may need to be replaced as they've aged over time. So what do I reckon to this car then? Do you know what? Actually, I think this is quite a good example and I'm really happy that we found it. So we've got black leather. There isn't really that many close-ups of the seats. Now I know that the seats in this car, similar to my M3, the bolsters on the side actually wear relatively fast as you're getting in and out and it wears down the leather and that can leave some fading or tearing on the side. So the fact that they haven't put any pictures on here doesn't really give me that much confidence in that. However, from this topless photo, I can see that actually it looks like it's in relatively good condition and I kind of like the black leather 
Lots of them you see in the red. There's lots of red leather cards around. And I do like the blue, but black leather with a blue outside kind of looks pretty cool. Now, some of you may think it looks a little bit hairdresser, and you may be right in that sense. However, with some new wheels on there, and maybe a little bit of lowering, then you can bring this car kind of up to that badass look that you may be looking for. Okay, so for seven and a half grand, I actually think that's a really, really good car to do. But that's our base, okay? So everything we look at from now, take that as your baseline. Cheapest car you can get that's actually any good. So now moving on to the most expensive car. So we're gonna set Auto Trader at a high to low filter and have a look at the first cars that come up. Okay, so these are the cars that come up when we do a high to low filter on the S2000. Now we're gonna ignore the first two. And the reason for that is the first one is supercharged and we're not interested in doing that. And the second one is because it only has one photo and doesn't look very genuine from that race car photo. So we're gonna to go to the third photo along, which is actually a GT edition, which if you remember earlier when talking about the history of the S2000, the GT edition is that one off that came to the UK that had upgraded styling, as well as a hard top removable roof as standard. So let's have a look at that car. So again, white, I love white cars, and this S2000 just looks really good in that white. Also, you have the GT edition wheels on there as well, which look really, really cool. Grayed out into dark gunmetal gray with that hard top roof actually just kind of gives the S2000 a bit more of a meaner look. And you can see there from that front bumper as well, that's the GT styling, as well as those side skirts and that rear wing on the back kind of gives it that more race car look it takes you back to the s2000 from fast and furious as well so that looks really really cool so you've got black s2000 badges as well as red leather in this car now the white and red i can kind of get behind and the quality of seats in this looks really good as well however it has been definitely driven because you can see some wear in the leather but again it's not about how many miles the car has done it's all about how the car has been driven so check the service history make sure everything's clean hpi check it do the mot on the registration before you buy any car and get an AA serviceman or RAC serviceman to come and give the car a full inspection before you hand any money over. So you can see here by the plate that this is the 71th edition of the GT that came to the UK. So really good to see that in there, making sure it is OEM. And as I mentioned, here is all the Honda servicing and full service history as well as two keys. So here's a picture of the engine bay. Now, Bear in mind here as well, the picture of the engine bay we saw on the seven and a half thousand pound car. This doesn't look that much better because it's an older car, right? So this car is a 2009, right? Five years older than the seven and a half grand one. But again, the engine bay looks quite dirty, but obviously it's used, it's a car, don't be afraid of it. All it needs is a quick cleanup. We've got a red engine cover on here this time, as opposed to a paint colored one. However, again, all looks good. It's got the full service history. It's got the VIN number there on the inside as well, showing it's an authentic frame. And I think that looks really good. Okay, so we've looked at the most expensive car there is an auto trader for an S2000. And luckily it was a GT edition. So you can see exactly what you're gonna get for that. Now the rest of the cars range from around 16, 15, 15 grand for a low mileage, 24 to 30,000 mile car. But to be honest with you, in my opinion, you're just wasting your money at that point. The difference between 30,000 miles and 60,000 miles in terms of actually how the car performs or the wear on the car really isn't that much different in my opinion. And I encourage you to go and look at a mid mileage car. So what do I think you should be paying? Well, to be honest with you, I think that the honest price for a good S2000 that you can go and buy out of the box, buy it, take it home, put it in your garage and drive it on a Saturday and Sunday every weekend, it's gonna be around 12,000 pounds. Let's set our maximum price at 12 grand and see what we can get for that money. So originally we had 48 cars in, now we're down to 31. So you see how many cars were on a higher price bracket than that. So we'll sort high to low and we'll see what cars we have here as well. So first of all, I can see that we have cars from 65,000 miles, 12 grand for a nice 2000, and four AP254 reg. Let's just go through before we come back and choose any. We've got a AP1 76,000 miles on there. I'm not sure what the difference is between that AP1 2002, that blue one at 23,000 miles. I'm assuming it's been crashed, which is why it's so cheap. So we're just gonna stay away from that one for the moment. As we move down, you can see we're getting towards around the 10,000 pound mark. Now, I think that you should be spending 12 grand on a decent mileage car if you're looking to get some money out of the car when you sell it as well. Now, if you're looking for the car as a project car or a track car, I would highly recommend going and buying a car between seven and 10,000 pounds because as you can see beforehand, the quality of the car is great, right? And if you're gonna be stripping it or you're gonna be turning it into a project car, or say for example, you've only got a 10,000 pound budget, go and buy the car for seven and a half thousand pounds or try and get the car down lower if you can. Because what that means is you then have two and a half 
the £3,000 to spend on insurance and road tax for the first year, maybe some new wheels or a hard top or whatever you want to buy for the car, new wheels, spaces, springs, anything you want to do to it, you then have some money to do. Now, if you're looking to buy that car out of the box at 12 grand, which one should you buy? Now, I think this is your car. S2000, 2003, so the end of the AP1, for £11,950, this car comes with 52,000 miles. So bang in the middle. Again, you can have this car, drive it for 20,000 miles, and it'll probably actually go up in appreciation. These cars are going up in value if you look after them. So bear that in mind as you own the car, but I think this is a really, really clean example. I love the blue and I love the silver contrast alloys on there as well. These are the OEM 17 inch alloys. The car looks really, really clean. 2002 uh, 52 plate. Again, just looks really nice. The only thing that I would change on this car is change the washers to a body color. But again, that's a really small thing that can easily be done. The inside of the engine bay. Now, if you looked at the other cars, this actually has a better engine bay than the others. And I guarantee you they're absolutely no different. The guys has taken the time to clean the engine bay. Right, now what does that mean? Well, actually it means nothing. However, what it does show is that this guy cares about his car and that's the most important bit. Most people don't clean their engine bays unless you are really involved and love the car and want to maintain it to the best you possibly can. So to me, that already shows. So the other thing that this car comes with is a removable hardtop within the price. Now, I'm not sure of the price of them. However, I have heard from MX-5s and S2000s, people that I have known in the past, but actually they are quite expensive. I'm gonna approximate around 500 quid for a hardtop that's decent. I'm not quite sure whether that's accurate, but ultimately this comes with a body color roof and it just kind of completes the look. Hard top for the winter, soft top for the summer. Can't really ask for much more than that. It has the blue leather. Now I mentioned at the start of this video that this was kind of my personal preference, strangely, because you think blue on blue doesn't really work, but I kind of like it. And again, you may not, but this is kind of what I would buy if I have that money. The leather looks like it's been kept in really, really good nick as well. The seats are in great condition. It's got full service history. And ultimately, I think that this is a really, really good. So this is the car that I would buy if you were looking to buy a car out of the box. Now, what would I recommend you buy if you are looking for a cheaper end car, but don't want the bottom of the run cheapest car you can find? So let's have a look through. And to be honest with you, there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot of options and they range with mileage as well. But if you are on a lower budget, you're gonna to wanna to go older car. However, like I mentioned, the AP1 and AP2 aren't really that much different apart from that 0.2 displacement difference in the AP2 engine, as well as some kind of difference in headlights. But AP1 is just that original S2000 and I wouldn't be too put off about it not being pre face stiff. Like my E92 M3 is a pre face stiff versus the LCI competition cars. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. So I wouldn't worry about that at all. Now the car that I would buy if I was you is this eight and a half thousand pound car here. Now this one looks in really great condition. The wheels look good, the body looks good. It's actually a Binko, which is Calvin's Car Diaries uh, car as well. So he's a really reputable guy, which means that the car's obviously been looked after and bought in the correct way. And it's priced fairly as well. So I would go and have a look at what that looks like. And the interior of the car looks good. It comes with the soft top, outside looks clean, wheels look clean, no dents or scratches that I can see. It comes with a square plate as well, which is quite rare. And it's only got 68,000 miles on the car as well. So again, this is the kind of what you'd be looking to get into. It doesn't look as good on the inside. The wheel's a bit more worn, the carpet's a bit more worn, and it's not up there with that 12,000 pound car with a removable hardtop. But then again, that's the difference that you get in the budget you pay. So that's kind of what I'm thinking really. Again, if you think differently, let me know down in the comments below. Um, I've really enjoyed looking into the S2000. And you know what actually is really made me want to buy one and turn it into a track car, especially seeing that car that you know what, actually, let's go and have a look. So first of all, this is obviously the Nordschleife uh, Nürburgring and immediately caught my attention because I'm a big Nordschleife fan. So fast road and track car, let's see what they've done. So we've got Recaro race seat in there as well. So you can fit a Recaro bucket seat in. But yeah, this just looks pretty cool. And you know what, I'm really tempted to do this. Buy a cheaper car, strip it. This guy's got some wear in the roof, but ultimately it's a track car. It's got all the service records there. It's got lots of stuff done to it. 126,000 miles. But God, I'm actually really, really tempted to do that. So I might actually start having a look into what we could potentially do. Would you guys like to see 
a S2000 track car on the channel. I want to start doing some more track content. I've got my art license and I do love doing track days, but obviously with the whole COVID-19 stuff that's been happening, there hasn't really been the opportunity and any track days that have come up for the M3 have automatically been booked by everyone waiting there as well. So I haven't really had the chance, but next year, would you guys like to see an S2000 track car on the channel? If you would, drop a comment down below and I'll see if I can make it happen. So that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this new series that we're bringing to the floor at YouTube channel. We're going to be doing RS4s, M3s, Clio, MX5s, 350Zs, 370Zs, anything you can find under £20,000, Golf R's, M140s, etc. We're going to be doing a video on each of these and then I'm going to be reviewing the market on Autotrader and seeing what good cars look like versus what bad cars look like. So if you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button and if you've made it this far, please ensure you do so so that I know you have. If you don't already, please follow me on Instagram at M3Floor, send me a DM with any questions you have about this video, about my M3, about content that we've got coming up. Lots of you all already messaged me and we've got a really really great community on instagram right now i love talking to all of you it's not just about video stuff we're all becoming friends and i love that car community that we have so if that sounds like something you're interested in then please follow me down below so that's the end of today's video i hope you enjoyed if you're new here hit that subscriber button it would really mean a lot to me we're over 250 now approaching 300 we're going and we're not going to stop so if you're new here subscribe new videos come out at 6 p.m every sunday my name's george and this is the floor at youtube channel subscribe for more and i'll catch you guys in the next video stay fast